What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So this was uh, a stat and a question that was presented to me, and I'd like to get your opinion on this as well. And that is, which one of these players should have won the 1988-89 MVP? Should it have been Magic Johnson? who that year won his second league MVP, his first coming in 87. His third and final MVP came the very next season, 89-90. And a very close, uh, may have been the closest ever, MVP race between him and Charles Barkley. Um, but Michael Jordan had a case. He definitely had a case for a league MVP as well. And when you go head-to-head, -head, you could see a clear dominance statist uh, statistically by Michael Jordan. It's not just the numbers. Um, Michael obviously didn't have as much help around him as Magic Johnson did. All right? Um, that's clear. So therefore, Michael was asked to do a lot more than um, he would have to do, say, during the years with Phil Jackson when the team around him was better. And to a certain extent, you know, you had his teammates step up. Well, a lot of people like to say, well, Michael learned how to pass. Or Michael learned how to uh, trust his teammates more, whatever. But in reality, what you saw more of what occurred is that his teammates stepped up more. But Whereas before, Michael was asked to do a lot more. And oftentimes, against the better teams, no matter what his efforts were, they would lose. That's why a lot of Michael's pre-championship 40 and 50 point games and even 60 point games came in losing efforts because he had to do so much just to give the team a shot to win a ball game. But when other players started stepping up, especially during the, the, the last three-peat, you'll notice that a lot of his, the majority of his 40 and 50 point performances were victories. They were a lot more efficient uh, because he had help around him that stepped up and it was harder to just contain him. And um, but anyway, points per game, rebounds per game, steals per game, blocks per game, all in Jordan's favor. Turnovers per game in Jordan's favor. Field goal percentage in Jordan's favor. Three point percentage in Magic Johnson's favor. Um, now, of course, they had different roles. Michael was the primary scorer on the team. Uh, he shouldered not just a lot of the offensive burden that year, but playmaking as well, uh, averaging a career-high eight assists per game. Magic did not shoulder not nearly as much offensive burden for the Lakers, but he was the man that ran the offense. The, the offense ran through Magic. And because of the decline of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that would be his last year, and he really was a shell of himself by 88-89, Magic had to take on even more scoring uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, both teams fell off a little bit from the year prior. The year that Michael won MVP, 87-88, the Bulls won 50 games. 88-89... Uh, it, their record fell to 47-35. Uh, but then again, the Lakers fell back six, uh, five victories. They won 62 games in 1988. Matter of fact, in 87, they won 65 games, 86-87, which is the high point of the Showtime era. 87-88, the prior year they won the championship, which will end up being Magic's last, uh, <clears throat> they won 62 games. 88-89, they won 57 games. Now, who do I think should have won MVP? You, you, you can make a great case for Michael Jordan based on the numbers. You really can. Um, but this is the thing. Give me one second. Magic Johnson, up to that point, had 
had a much better 1988 compared to 89. In 1987-88, he averaged 19.6 points. That year, 22.5. A vast increase. Right? Rebounds. The year before, he averaged 6.2 rebounds. That year, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar being a shell of himself, he averaged 7.9 rebounds. The most rebounds he had averaged since 82-83. His assists were up from 11.9 the year before to 12.8 assists per contest. The only reason why he didn't win the assists titles because of a little guy, a little scrawny guy from Gonzaga named John Stockton. Even the steals were up from 1.6 to 1.8. Blocks, 0.2 to 0.3. Um, his field goal percentage was up 49.2% to 50.9%. He appeared in more games. The year before, 72 games. Uh, he appeared in 77 in 1989. Uh, his free throw percentage, already stellar at 85.3% in 87 88. He led the NBA in free throw percentage at 91.1% in 88 89. A remarkable turnaround from a guy that was once an average free throw shooter. Shooting just, well, I'm not going to say just 76%, but shooting an average 76% just in 81 82. The last few years of his Laker career, he was one of the best free throw shooters in the NBA. Even his three point percentage went from 19.6% on 0.8 attempts in 87 88 to 31% on 2.4 attempts. So, as I said before, one of the reasons why these guys weren't shooting well from three is because they weren't taking that shot a lot. But with repetition, when they began to take that shot with more regularity, they became better three-point shooters. Hence why Michael Jordan, for his career, was a 32.7% career three-point shooter. But in the seasons when he took three or more attempts, his percentage was 38.5%. Um, so... When you look at the numbers, look at the impact, I don't have a problem with Magic Johnson winning MVP. Even though Michael had the superior scoring numbers, uh, I don't have a problem with Magic Johnson winning MVP that year. Now, 88, excuse me, 89-90, I think it should have been Charles Barkley. I think Charles Barkley should have won the MVP in 1990. I think he was robbed of the MVP uh, that year. But that's another debate for another story. That's another... Uh, debate for another video. Uh, tell me what you guys think, because I know you might not agree. Uh, who do you think should have won MVP that year? Michael Jordan or Magic Johnson in 88 89?